Hi and welcome back. Uh, welcome to my first YouTube demo of 2023 um, where I'm taking a theme of experimentation and sketching uh, for my first demo to create this loose and light filled sunlit wood scene. I suppose you could call it a pencil and wash because it's mostly used using a pencil sketch and then the wet in wet technique to apply some really loose washes. And then I've used salt effects to create these beautiful blossoms and leaf effects. As I was painting it, I was intending to paint more detail after the salt had finished drying off, uh, but I really liked the way it looked. So I simply went back in with a pencil and darkened up some of the tones here and there on top of the wash with the pencil um, just to bring the painting together into this sort of impressionistic sketch. Here's the photograph from Pixabay that I use for inspiration um, and um, you can see that I'm trying to capture the light rather than the detail in my painting. So I'm starting off with some Milford cold pressed um, watercolour paper, 140 pounds weight or um, 300 GSM. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to simplify the photograph and for that all I need to do is rough out the position of uh, my ground plane, uh, my little cabin and my main trees. The rest I can um, let the washes and the salt create but getting in the right position of those, um, the main elements, for me, is the most important first stage. I'm using um, an ordinary large carpenter's pencil. It's got a, a large lead, it's a large pencil, and it helps to keep me loose. And by that, I mean it helps me to keep really simple. So I'm only putting on a few marks here and there to guide me as I paint. I'm putting in the cabin, the ground plane, and the most important trees. I'm sketching these pencil marks in fairly dark so that you can see them, but I also want the pencil marks to be an integral part of the painting. I can go over them once the first washes are done with paint, but this sketching helps to give structure to the painting uh, for the kind of look that I'm going for, which is very impressionistic and sort of sketchy. So I've finished the sketch and I have laid my board completely flat. Um, this is because I want to um, get the washes, the loose washes on, and I don't want the washes to run down the page. I want them to pretty much stay where I put them, but I'm painting wet in wet, so I want them to softly diffuse where they are. So today my board's flat. So I'm using a large flat wash brush to um, wet the paper all over, leaving a few little dry patches here and there for some soft and hard edges. You can see a slightly tinted colour. That's because um, there was a little bit of um, paint left in my paintbrush from a previous painting and I hadn't washed it out properly. But hopefully that won't affect things too much. I've sprayed my paper with my water misting spray as well and that adds a slightly more random element to the wetness of the page so that when I come to drop my washes in I should get some really pretty effects. So the aim now is to get a really pretty wash onto the page, quite a pale wash, um, using a limited palette. The colours I'm using today are going to be um, it's ultramarine blue and um, cad yellow lemon, so lemon yellow, and the third colour that I'm going to use um, to neutralise um, the blues, yellows and greens is burnt sienna, which will give me some darks, but some nice sort of olive greens as well. So the burnt sienna will help with tones. So I've mixed various mixtures of green with cad yellow and ultramarine blue. And I'm just dropping them into the wet areas around the cabin, um, building up my sort of canopies and 
making sure that I get a variety of shades of green or hues of green and by that uh, for that I'm mixing either more yellow or more blue into the mix in various places but keeping it nice and light and fresh. Now here's the burnt sienna so burnt sienna is the third colour in my limited palette today and what that's doing is giving me these nice earthy tones and with varying mixtures of my three colours will eventually give me some much darker tones which will give me my shadows. You can see that I've added pure um, cad yellow around the cabin here and there um, and that's just diffusing and running into the other colours and giving me these lovely soft passages of much lighter areas so I can begin to focus the sunlight in my scene using this lovely cool yellow. And now a richer mixture of paint to produce um, some mid-tones and putting in the shadows between the trees, uh, dropping in a few fine lines around the trunks and the branches just to start building up the tone around there and around the edges of my painting um, so that I can bring some shadow around the edges of the foliage and that in itself helps to further accentuate the lightness and brightness of the sunlit areas around the cabin. I'm still painting wet into wet, but I am aware that the paper is starting to dry, so I'm working quite quickly and I'm dropping in some burnt sienna, uh, quite pale, into the building and it will um, sort of bleed into um, the greens a little bit and that softening and blending will hopefully give me, you know, an enhanced look of that sort of um, reflected light. Now dropping in a darker mix of burnt sienna, ultramarine and a bit of the yellow into the cabin here and there just to get those shadows into the side of the cabin and that helps to really push out this light side although I still still want to get a bit of tone onto the light side um, for a little bit of shadow from the trees. So my painting's still flat, so things are softening and diffusing, and I hope you can see that there's a slight watermark creeping into my roof. But I'm quite happy with that because, again, that's going to work in my favour to help um, blend the cabin with the woodland and help to give it that really integrated um, look, as if the cabin is sort of growing out of the woodland, if you see what I mean. Now more of this darker colour across the foreground in a sort of a something and nothing way, just creating a very loose impression of foreground sort of grasses, shrubs, weeds, that sort of thing. I don't want any detail in here. Um, and I just need to intensify some of the colour here around my light. So this is um, quite a rich mixture of ultramarine blue and the lemon yellow which gives me this really nice coolish green it's quite vivid but it will soften back um, as it dries so the next stage is to add my fine ordinary table salt I'm going to add it to the ground plane because that's almost dry um, I've just got a little jar of ordinary salt here and um, I have to be careful when I add it if the paint is too wet then there'll be no effect. If it's too dry, there'll be no effect. So what I'm looking for is to see an area where the shine has gone off of the paper, but it's still damp. And this is where I'm sprinkling my salt across my ground plane. And what the salt will do is it will push away the paint and leave me some little patterns that hopefully will look like flowers, um, or sunlight dapples or blossoms in the trees. I want to put some in the trees but I need to wait now for about five minutes because this tree paint is still too wet. So once I'm confident that the shine has gone off of the paper and that it's still damp then I can sprinkle some salt across the area where in the photograph I can see the blossoms 
and I hope that you can see in the foreground that the salt has already started working so you can see the effects the tiny little miniature blooms starting to take place so now I need to leave it to dry completely and then I can come back assess how things look and then decide how to proceed with the painting So here it is, it's nice and dry and in real life it's a lot brighter than this. It looks quite dull in the light, the winter light in my studio, but it's got some beautiful light and hopefully I'll get a better picture of it at the end. You can see how the salt has given me these beautiful sort of blossom effects. So if we zoom in, we've got these lovely effects as if the foliage and blossom is climbing up the wall of the cabin and over the roof. And I really like the way it looks at the moment. I had intended to add a lot more painted detail um, at this stage, but I'm rethinking that now. But the first thing that I need to do is to brush off any salt that remains. Some of the salt has been dissolved, but I've brushed off the remainder, um, leaving me a nice smooth surface. So what I'm going to do first is remove the tape. Um, this will help me to assess whether or not um, I want to paint. And if I don't want to paint, help me decide um, how I want to proceed with the painting. Um, seeing it with a clean white border helps me to sort of reassess it. And I really like it. Uh, but it's basically all light tones and mid tones. There's um, the start of a few darks, uh, but I don't want to overdo the darks. And I think if I painted in lots of detail in the tree trunks and branches and the cabin, I think I might overdo it. So I'm going to turn it into a line and wash sketch. And this time, instead of using fine liners for my line work, I'm going to enhance the sketch that I've already got with my carpenter's pencil. I'm going to add in a little bit more detail into the foliage, so therefore putting in more finer branches that lead up to the canopies that have been created with my wet in wet washes and my salt effects and really darken up some of the values in my tree trunks and stronger branches and in my cabin where there are shadows. So my pencil lines are becoming my line work for this line and wash. I'm trying to keep this really nice sort of sketchy quality to it. And in doing this, hopefully I shall keep this painting looking fresh and impressionistic and filled with light. I really like the combination of um, graphite pencil marks with the paint and the salt effects here. I'm really pleased with this. It's quite a sort of an unexpected um, way that I'm proceeding, but that's what experiments are all about. And I think it's really good to sort of have a flexible approach so that when you're painting, if something doesn't quite work out as you expected, in other words, here I was expecting to paint over the top of my wash and salt detail with darker colours, but I knew that that wouldn't look right and I didn't want to ruin the painting, so I decided on a different approach and that was to get the pencil out and to continue with those lines because I could see through the washes that I really liked the marks that the pencil had made. And so by enhancing them, um, I am keeping everything in much more harmony and keeping that light, which for me is the most important thing about this painting. So just a few final darks under the eaves and on the roof, smudging it a bit with my finger just to sort of blend it in a little bit more. Um, some darks here and there in between um, the back of the cabin, between those um, trees and branches and shrubs. And also just putting in a little bit of a window um, into the cabin with the pencil rather than using... Um, paint to introduce sort of harder mark there. Now I'm quite happy with this. Um, I'm really enjoying this as an experiment. I think it makes for, as I say, a really nice subtle painting, which is much nicer in real life than my winter studio light shows. 
Um, if we look closely, I'm especially pleased with now the way the pencil darks are really highlighting the pretty salt effects that are climbing up the walls and over the roof of the cabin as the blossom from the trees um, really does kind of um, create those lovely light effects uh, from the salt effects in the paint. So when you're experimenting, um, don't be afraid to try different sort of media. I mean, you could go into this with some pastel, maybe some watercolour um, crayons, pencil crayons. Um, those would look absolutely lovely, enhancing some of the detail here. Now here it is, um, these are the colours that it is in real life and the lemon yellow has worked beautifully with the ultramarine blue to produce these really bright vivid yellows and, and lovely fresh greens and the burnt sienna has been the perfect complement for that pop of red on the roof of the cabin but also to give us those lovely sort of um, more earthy shades for the shadow colours in the foliage and the foreground. And I think um, the combination here of um, wet in wet watercolour washes, um, pencil marks for tonal values, and of course the salt effects have worked together really beautifully to make for a very different style of painting. It's certainly something that I'll be experimenting a bit more with because I really like the fresh sort of painterly and sketchy look of this painting. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting and happy experimenting. Bye.